Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we take our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Dr. Irons, very different Memorial Day weekend, including moving my daughter out of the house after a year of being here with us during the pandemic. Uh, can you talk about how this is looking from a public health perspective? Sure. Um, you know, the biggest difference is probably the pervasive sense of optimism right now. Looking back a year ago, it was canceled parades and all crowded gatherings were banned. We were then on a cusp of recording 100,000 deaths from the coronavirus. This year, parades and barbecues took place across the country and vaccinated people were being urged to get outside and enjoy the holiday. But hundreds of people are still dying each day, pushing the death count in the United States past 594,000, an enormous toll that few envisioned a year ago. But the vaccinations over the past six months have proved to be a game changer. To sum it up, a year ago, we were at the end of the beginning of the pandemic in the US, and now we're kind of at the beginning of the end. Well, it does feel different, uh, especially in regard to travel, where we're seeing kind of peak numbers back at the airports. You know, are we concerned about this? Well, you know, there, there are concerns. You know, um, they're big crowds. Travel is back, both in the air and on the road. Um, air travel has been climbing for much of this year and hit a pandemic peak on Friday when more than 1.95 million passengers passed through TSA security checkpoints. That level was last reached in early March 2020 as the virus was just beginning to spread. The concern is that with increased travel, we're also seeing more passenger, passengers resisting mask mandates. Um, you know, as a reminder, masks are still required on all modes of public transportation. TSA's mandate says that passengers remain fully masked throughout their flights, and the CDC's guidance still says even fully vaccinated people need to mask up on airplanes and on mass transit. Um, but in reaction to this, we've seen a surge in disruptive and sometimes violent behavior on recent flights. And that's, uh, that's sad, uh, and I've read a lot about that. Um, more mask guidance uh, from the CDC, this time in, re in relation to summer camps. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, and you know, this guidance, as with everything in this pandemic, is nuanced. Um, so the CDC relaxed its guidance Friday for summer camps, saying that vaccinated adolescents do not need to wear masks at camp, and that even younger campers who have not been inoculated can generally not wear masks when outdoors. So in that, this new guidance removed some inconsistencies between the earlier camp recommendations that all staffers and campers wear masks, and the evidence that masks are rarely needed outdoors. Um, the updated guidance comes as older teens and camp staff also are eligible for vaccination and more recently campers ages 12 to 15. However, many camps also serve younger children who cannot yet be vaccinated and for those it becomes more complicated. Unvaccinated people are strongly encouraged to wear masks indoors and outdoors in crowds or when close to others for prolonged periods. And since it may not be possible for camps to know who is vaccinated and who is not, the CDC does note that camps may still choose to follow the previous guidance, which was masks for all. And, uh, you know, speaking of vaccinations and uh, younger people, can we talk a little bit about how those numbers are looking? Well, you know, they're, they're, they're still climbing, but, but the climb is starting to, is slowing down. Um, half of all people in the U.S. have started the vaccination process and 40% are fully vaccinated, but the number of doses administered each day has fallen about half from its April peak. So looking at the specific numbers, more than 167 million Americans have received at least one dose, that's 50.5%, and over 135 million are fully vaccinated, just, just shy of 41%. If you just look at people over the age of 18, over 50% are fully vaccinated. Um, so more than 62% of people 60, 18 and older have received at least one dose, um, and that's the number President Biden is looking at to reach 70% by July 4th. Do you think we're going to hit that number? I think so. You know, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, and I think as, as you know, the biggest gains recently are in kids between 12 and 15 years of age. Um, but um, we'll, we'll see. You know, maybe we'll, we'll pull some parents in um, as their kids are being vaccinated. We also saw the potential for another vaccine authorization for this uh, age group. Can you talk about it? 
Yeah, so Moderna, um, the other uh, manufacturer of the other mRNA vaccine said last Tuesday that its coronavirus vaccine authorized only for use in adults was powerfully effective in the 12 to 17 year olds and that it planned to apply to the FDA in June um, for authorization to use the vaccine in adolescents. Um, you know, even though 12 to 15 year olds are just 5% of the population, numbering 17, nearly 17 million experts say that reaching them can have significant benefits for the rest of the country. Well, you mentioned up front, you know, we are still seeing cases and deaths and particularly a divergence between, of course, those who are vaccinated and who are unvaccinated. Can you first start at the top level in terms of the numbers? Sure. So in terms of confirmed um, cases, 33,264,595 individuals. Um, and tragically, um, 594,568 people have died um, from COVID-related um, uh, illness. Um, the case numbers, however, are continuing to plummet. About 23,000 new infections are being identified each day, the fewest in nearly a year. Um, several states in the Midwest and Northeast have seen reports of new cases decline by more than 50% over the last two weeks. No state is seeing a major increase in cases, um, and the daily death rate is at its lowest level since last summer. So that divergence, though, between the unvaccinated and the vaccinated, it tells a different story when you start to dig into those numbers, doesn't it? Oh, it certainly does. That's a great point. Um, you know, this encouraging picture that what that we're talking about is being driven by vaccinated people. Um, there's still a danger for the unvaccinated, and that's where the nuance kicks in. Um, as more people receive vaccines, cases are occurring mostly in the increasingly narrow slice of the unprotected population. The Washington Post recently adjusted its case, death, and hospitalization rates to account for that and found that in some places, the virus continues to rage among those who haven't received a shot. Um, adjustments for vaccination show the rate among susceptible unvaccinated people is 73% higher than the standard figures being publicized. Um, and with that adjustment, the national death rate is roughly the same as it was two months ago and is barely inching down. Unvaccinated people are getting the wrong message. They think it's safe to take off their masks and it's not. Yeah, I uh, looked at that Washington Post data as well and, you know, uh, it's pretty clear that uh, you need to get vaccinated right now. Those levels are still at you know the high levels they were months ago for unvaccinated people. Um, you know, speaking of vaccinated people and the issue of uh, breakthrough infections, where someone who has the vaccine uh, still contracts uh, uh, COVID-19, can you talk to, talk about CDC's announcement that it's not going to keep investigating these breakthrough infections? What what does this mean and and why? So the CDC has stopped investigating breakthrough coronavirus infections in vaccinated people unless the cases cause serious disease that leads to a hospitalization and death. It's still going to continue to gather the data about mild breakthrough cases that are reported to the agency voluntarily by local health departments, but will only investigate the most serious cases of breakthrough infections. You know, we knew that the vaccines were, if you look at the, the mRNA vaccines, 94% effective against symptoms disease. Um, so we knew we were going to get some breakthrough infections, but it's the hospitalizations, those that are severe or leading to death, um, that are the concern. And, um, you know, the agency until May was monitoring all cases. Um, a report issued last Tuesday said that at the end of April, when some 101 million Americans had been vaccinated, the agency had received um, 10,261 reports of breakthrough infections from 46 states and ter territories. But of those, 995 people were known to have been hospitalized and 160 had died, though not all as a direct result of COVID-19, the new study said. Um, so I think this is a way to prioritize and understand the cases that are associated with severe disease, which is what we care about the most. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of things are working the way they should. And when they don't, looking at those kind of more extreme cases to understand better, is that basically the path here? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, just finally, in closing, any new messages from the AMA uh, this week that you want to share? Sure. Um, last Wednesday, the AMA issued a statement on ongoing global COVID-19 challenges. 
you know, the statement read, while our country continues to make progress in vaccinating people and the resulting decline in COVID infections, we remain amidst a global pandemic with rising COVID-19 illness and deaths in India, Brazil, Argentina, and many other countries. We'll continue to urge global cooperation in the fight against this virus, providing vaccines and medical supplies that will help diminish the humanitarian crisis that we are seeing throughout the world. Importantly, Many physicians from India and other countries practice medicine throughout the United States and have worked hard throughout the pandemic to protect us here while watching their loved ones abroad suffer illness and death in their countries of origin. We continue to urge support and will facilitate coordination amongst the U.S. government, the United Nations, World Health Organization, World Medical Association, and other partners in responding to the global pandemic, which will continue to be of international concern for the foreseeable future. Dr. Arns, thanks so much for those thoughts and for the rest of your perspective. That's it for today's COVID-19 update. We'll be back soon with another segment. In the meantime, for additional information on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today. Please take care.